Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Precision. This is their part number PLS24PROXHD-BLK Extra Heavy Duty Concealed Magnetic Catch with Adjustable Strength Black Finish. This is a touchless, touchless roller latch, I suppose, without the roller. Um, this is a couple of magnets that you install into the header, into the top of the door. When you close the door, it's going to keep the door in the closed position. It's really um, a great idea. It's a new piece of hardware. This is the first time I'm seeing it, and I believe it's only been on the market for less than a year. Um, I'm sure that you can install it at the floor as well, but it would be best up in the header. Uh, you're going to need a certain clearance underneath the bottom of the door, and you'd have to bring those magnets really close to each other for maximum holding power, like really close. So you'd want to do that up in the header would be the bottom line, or in, this, or in the jam, in the strike jam. So let's just do a visual tour of what this is, and then we'll talk about it. So I've got, I have everything removed from this plastic case. Um, it's a neat, very neat um, packaging concept. Really nice quality plastic case that's here. The screws, the shims, the magnets, the bumpers are all tossed in here. A lot of hold on these. First of all, there are two magnets, and with the exception of the polarity of the magnets, they're going to be identical. Okay. When you bring those close to each other, even at this distance, which has got to be 5 inch, maybe four inch right there I can feel if I let the if I let the if I let one go it's gonna snap and I don't want it to catch my finger whoa that was not planned so what we just saw there was a demonstration I think of the holding force of the magnets and um, getting them spread, I just work on one end of them, the weak point of the magnet, and get it brought to 90, then I can peel it apart. Um, that is, there's steel structure around my desk. That is, uh, I think, I think that, <laughs> I think, sorry for the scare, I think that illustrates um, where you would use this in a door that's going to require a bit more holding force. I don't know the holding force of this in shear, but that demonstration might lead you to believe that, yeah, it's probably going to keep your 3070 door closed pretty well. Um, let's do a visual tour, and then we're going to talk first about why you might use this. My steel, my tape is made of steel, so overall length of the body is about two and three quarter inch. Overall depth is about a quarter inch. And again, these magnets would be the same with the exception of polarity. I keep... <sighs> Everywhere I put them, they pick something up. So you can imagine the scene that's been happening here for the last 10 minutes as I get ready, review this stuff. Uh, there's then screws. These, thankfully, are basically non-ferrous. Yeah, they're probably stainless. Uh, that's what's going to allow you to get that installed down, obviously, into the door or whatever you're installing it, or the header. It's an awfully long screw. Let's, let's measure that, just so you know. The length of that screw is about an inch and a half. So be mindful, this is going to go up through your typical three-quarter inch screw uh, header or jam. A couple of cover plates. Self-adhesive 3M on the back. Once you're completely installed, you're obviously going to place that right down there. Nice and concealed. Beautiful black cover to that. Then there are some shims. These are going to be tucked down around the body. They'll come installed or shipped like this. You pull those shims off, and there's apparently, there are definitely different thicknesses. Uh, 
and you're just going to use those as necessary. The, what I'm saying is, should you need to bring the uh, magnets closer together, you can pad that from the top of the door if you're installing it at the header uh, in that sort of regard. The thin shim is 0.019. The next size, 0.039. 059 nope point 078 point 12 okay different sizes here the last thing that's going to be included well two things a couple of rubber bumpers you're going to want to have those bumpers so that when the door the door is going to come to the closed position the magnet's going to draw it to the closed position you want to insert these rubber bumpers. One is clear, one is white. It's not clear to me, clear, it's not obvious to me why they're different colors. Um, that might be revealed when we look at the installation instructions. And speaking of that, this weird thing, this is a template is what this is. And I'll show you when we get to the installation instructions why you would use this. Um, now, what the heck would you use this for? Let's talk about that now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Now, why would you use a magnetic latch like this? Um, well, as far as I'm concerned, you might use it because you say, well, gosh, that's neat. That's a new technology. That, that's pretty smart. I like that a lot. It's concealed. You won't see it. Uh, and while it's certainly more expensive than a comparable piece of equipment by a factor of two at least, or three, um, it's awfully nice not to see the hardware. You know, if you're going for a look where you are literally going with concealed hardware, concealed hinges like Sauce or Tectus or Sugatsuni or McKinney, someone else makes that material as well. Um, yeah, you don't want to see the hardware. And I'm all for that, 100% all for that. You might like it because it's new, just new. You're familiar with roller latches, but you want something a little, you want something newer. That's all there is to it. Um, or you might realize that this could possibly, this will certainly be an improvement over that roller latch or ball catch technology. I was involved in a project for a client it didn't end well at all. Um, in about two th in about two thousand four, maybe two thousand three. Very custom doors in his condo, extremely custom. Um, Belmont and Halstead was a neighborhood. Uh, condo was a hundred yards, hundred feet actually off that intersection. Cherry doors, inch and three quarter, solid core cherry doors, where we took perforated metal, cut large holes in the doors, installed perforated metal, held that in with stops, bifolds, bathroom door. It's a condo, so there's two bedroom, two bedroom, two bath condo, a couple of closet doors. Um, wanted roller latches, just had no need for privacy, just wanted roller latches on everything. Um, I forget the handles, maybe flush poles, whatever it was. Well, we installed all this material and the fella calls up and says, yeah, like, this isn't going to work. What's well, not going to work? The doors are beautiful. No, no, the, the sound, the, the sound of the roller latch, the audible sound given off by the roller latch as you open and close the door, that sound was unacceptable. And as a result of that moment, where my response 17 years ago was, okay, what did you ask for? You wanted roller latches. You specifically said roller latches. I gave you what you wanted. I'm sorry that I wasn't adroit enough to be able to tell you, yeah, you realize that when you close your bathroom door, you're going to hear that sound, whether it be a roller latch or a latch bolt of a privacy set. Everything gives off acoustical energy here friend and he was thoroughly unsympathetic to reality 
boy, only had I known about a, an idea like this. You would not hear it. I'm sure there would be something else to complain out. The door complain. The door is closed too hard. Whoever, who knows, whatever. But you. But I have to trumpet the fact that this is silent. Okay, those two magnets are going to be brought to each other in this sort of orientation, and they're really going to stick together pretty well. Okay, that that would be why you would use these. Whether it be in the header for a, for a pair of doors or be in the jam for a single door, I think it would be just great. Um, I've not personally encountered a door that has this installed yet. It's I think it's just too new. Uh, but that's a real example. And um, I don't know what that person did with those doors. I know that they didn't pay the bill. Um, I doubt that they removed them. I doubt they said, well, for $10,000, I can learn to live with that sound. So anyway, um, I think what we'll do at this point is let's turn to the screen view and let's look at the installation instructions and talk about how all these pieces to go together. They're going to show that this gizmo is used as a way to mark how you'll prep the door and header. I wouldn't do it that way at all, um, but I understand in my head why they would uh, include this and say that's super easy. Um, the installation approach is going to be one that you don't need any more than a drill and a three dollar bit and you don't have to think very hard about it. So let's switch to the screen view and let's take a little deeper dive on how to install this material and I'll talk about how I would do it um, based on my experience. So let's do that now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, here's the item that we are looking at. Let's take a look at first some photographs that we have down below. That's the packaging. Close up of the front label, a little closer. Basically what will act almost as installation instructions, almost, gives you the uh, very much the overview. The components. What's not what's missing from this picture are the two rubber bumpers. They are included. Oops. Um, that template is there up at the top as you can see as well. With the covers removed. One of the units. Some of somewhat of a cross section. One of those units with the shims stacked onto it. Your screws, your template, your covers, and then your two bumpers. Again, not sure why there's one of each color. Uh, must have everything to do with maybe the durometer value, which forgive me if I'm using that wrong. I'm trying to say the hardness of the rubber. That could be why. It does appear as if the white unit has a thicker head. Um, I don't believe that's the case at all. So, extended description information. Extra heavy duty concealed magnetic catch. Three times stronger than the standard PLS24 Pro. And we will look at, well, let's do it now. Let's look at the other models that are available. PLS 12. Um, silver and black. For 16 millimeter to 30 millimeter doors. So you know, three quarter to inch and, and three sixteenths, something like that. 16 millimeter, one divided by 25.4 times 16 point, yeah, so five eighths. I'll, I'll leave it to you to determine the door thicknesses. The PLS 24, this will be for an inch and three quarter thick door in silver and black. And then the, um, at the high strength version in silver and black. Um, 
we have this here a circular version of it here the SSP1 there's a display here that um, is nice a mount if you have a retail situation so you know, there's there's three. You know, for for a, for an inch and three quarter thick door, there's going to be standard, super heavy duty, and then the round one. Black finish also available in silver can be used anywhere. A roller or ball latch would normally be fitted. Terms like fitted, and then the use of the metric system. This was patented in New Zealand. Mag magnets don't touch. They won't wear out. They don't scratch. Lifetime guaranteed. They can be painted over. No latch noise when opening and shutting the door, unlike a roller ball catch. It would be quite ironic if it was my client I mentioned earlier who invented this idea. Probably living with it for 15 years, you would invent an idea like this as well. Completely concealed when door is closed. No unsightly protruding strike lip. Can be held uh, in such a way to keep doors closed doors that you want to stay closed um, might be an advantage of helping overcome a door closer that has a latching valve problem the door gets so so close to closing but doesn't quite latch completely you can coax the door to come to the closed position with this smart bore easy fit installation we'll talk about that in a moment much easier and faster to install than traditional rectangular face units. Due to an innovative and patented design installation process that only requires boring a series of overlapping holes, that's where that template comes into play. They've designed this so that the approachability of the average homeowner is not hindered uh, to gravitating towards this. They've, they have come up with a way to make it extremely simple to install this. You don't need anything but a one inch spade bit and a drill. Power adjustment spacer rings. That's the, those plastic shims I showed you earlier. Spacers. Uh, no, I'd call them shims. Increased magnetic holding strength by fitting power adjustment rings under the flange lip of the door magnetic assembly. Half to three millimeter spacer rings or shims. Self-adhesive cover plates. Poron XRD foam impact absorption pad. That's not included. They indicate on the packaging that that absorption pad is separate. Not included. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I think what they're saying is the door might close with such force, you're going to want some deadening on there. Um, or what you might want to do is, if you have that problem, I would prefer to increase the distance between both of them mortise the unit. I would mortise the unit if you're putting it into the header or the strike jam. Mortise that flush so it's really nice looking into the top of the door or even the strike style of the lock style of the door. Mortise that in a little bit deeper would be my opinion. Now a couple of documents down below. Let's just tackle the product brochure first. Looks like there's a lot going on here. There, there really isn't. Showing you what it will look like, very clean, very smart, obviously the silver version. What you get, except this, sold separately. And this is the heavy duty version, can be used anywhere, magnets don't touch, all of this we've read already. Smart bore, easy to install is what they're saying here. So let's tackle, let's just tackle this paragraph by looking at their figures. So you need to determine a distance from the edge of the door to the center of the prep. That's called back set. They're saying two and three eighths. Great, no problem. Use it. Go two and a half. Go two and a quarter. You know, go wild with yourself. What you want to do though is you'll notice how the grain changes from this piece of wood to this piece of wood. That's because that's end grain. That's the style of the door. Stay away from that because it doesn't mortise as nicely as um, drilling into 
along with the grain, so to speak. So stay away from that. You can change that two and three eighths, but inspect the top of the door. So you locate the back set, edge of the door to the, to the center of the prep, and mark that line, line your template up. They want you to then drill five eighth of an inch holes. One, two, three, four, five. There are five holes in this template. Drill five holes into three of them. Uh, you're going to create, well, in all five of them, actually. One, two, three, and then the two inner ones. You're going to come up with a prep that looks like this. You're going to need to flatten all that out. I, I'm not sure why they're showing this tool there. What's step four? Eh, they don't give us a step four explanation. Um, I would just hammer and chisel that all flush. This, this is not meant to be a tool to clear any of that out. They might be showing that you need to have at least that much width in there. And in fact, you just might, but you may not even need to chisel that out because of the small amount of overlap here. Uh, obviously, you're going to mimic this in the jam or the header. Step five shows those spacers. Step six, obviously, install it. Power adjustment spacer rings, install them as needed. Um, I would mortise it flush with the door, and then you can build that up slightly. What I'm saying is the margin between the underside of the header or the strike jam to the door is an eighth of an inch generally. It could be a little more, and it could also be a little less, but it's about an eighth of an inch. So if you're going to pad that out at all, because you need greater strength, you won't pad it out very much, because otherwise the door won't, won't operate. After you have everything mortised to the proper depth, you've used any shims as necessary, you've tested it and it works exactly how you like, then you can put on your self-adhesive cover pads. Make sure you get that center down there really nice. Don't touch the adhesive. It's 3M, which means it's exceptional adhesive, but you still don't want to get fingerprints on it. Drill in rubber bumpers. For single application, fit second bumper to doorstop strip Four inch up from bottom of door. Okay, so they they don't they don't tell you which to use. It could just be a mistake that one's clear and one's white, or maybe it's hey use the one that you like. You want white, use white. You want clear, use clear. That's probably what it is, giving you choice. The installation of this install it in the center of the in the center of the thickness of the door, provided that you can offset it in the jam or the header between one-eighth of an inch and three-eighths of an inch. I don't have experience in terms of where I would want that to be. Um, I would probably be tempted to split that right in the middle. Just go quarter inch and see how you like it. Maybe make an adoption at that point going further, forward. You might also immediately know that you're going to require um, more holding force and therefore reduce that dimension closer to an eighth of an inch so that it hard stops but gives you the maximum holding force if you have a problem of a door closer needing a little bit of assistance. When the door is closed, the door jam assembly must be offset from the door magnetic assembly to function correctly, draw it in, to pull it in. Sold separately, right there. Smartboard drilling template. Now, I don't like this template at all, only because I have never seen someone be able to drill, you know, five holes with a spade bit and drill them to the identical depth every single time. I've never seen this. Beautiful cut. I can't do it that way. I would, I, I you know, and as a result, I wouldn't do it that way. I would use a router is where I was going with, with that. I would create a template, I would use a router, and I would install it that way. Showing some additional images here. If 
you needed more holding strength, they've got that obviously padded out with those shims that are there as well. Now there's also a link to the installation instructions and we've basically installed them because that document is basically all in one. 5A Okay, that's what it is, to the proper depth. This tool will allow you to make sure that you've drilled it down to the proper depth. So that's one way to compensate. If it's not resting on that shoulder there, go a little bit deeper. One inch spade bit. You're drilling five holes because you're gonna use the spade bit five times, but into these two holes, uh, actually, I don't know that. No, into the two outer holes, is where your screws will go. You're probably gonna to wanna to pre-drill that a little bit bigger than an eighth of an inch would be my guess. Finished installation, completely concealed. So I won't go through these installation instructions because I feel like we've really covered the basics of it anyway. There is a link below this video as seen here to the manufacturer's page, and that will allow you to quickly scroll through all of the different precision lock, magnetic latches, eh, holders, magnetic door holders, that there are. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Now I learned about this piece of hardware from a customer of mine who, um, uh, a potential client from Evanston, Illinois called and said, I have a problem. My door keeps opening. I have this very large dog and the dog jumps up and pushes on the door. And I said, well, how are you keeping it latched now? I have a roller latch. I says, okay, I was going to suggest a roller latch. Um, and the client said, yeah, no, that's what I want. I just want another one. I want two. <clears throat> and I said to the client, okay, well, I get it. That's not actually unheard of. In applications where you have, putting this all back together, in applications where you have exterior doors where people will have a deadbolt, ladder pulls, they'll add a couple of one or two roller latches just because they need to be able to keep the door in the closed position without it moving open. And when they want security is when they will then drop, or I should say throw the deadbolt. And that is what will provide security. Um, so the client said, yeah, I want another roller latch. I'm like, great, I can ship one to you today. The client knew the part they wanted. They wanted a Baldwin. I forget the Baldwin part number. Great quality fit and finish Baldwin roller latch. Um, hey, can you install it? I says, no, you're in Evanston, Illinois. I'm 1,200 miles away. I can't install it. But I know someone, so I sent the client the contact information for my, my the potential client with an existing client of mine who then called me and said, hey, thanks, yeah, I'm gonna install that roller latch. Hey, did you know that he told me all about this? And uh, we added the material to the website. Lo and behold, we have 13 of these going to the Philippines um, a month later. There you go, gonna be great. If you have any questions on the precision PLS24 Pro XHD in black or any other precision lock product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.